after drawing the geometry and define the magnet in the middle, the air surrounding the magnet and the infinite layers, we are gonna um, load the magnetic properties. So we go to magnetic fields, not currents, MFNC, that's gonna be the, the module. <clears throat> and the first thing is, if it's not selected yet, just go solve for full field. That's very, that's important. Now, <clears throat> we, uh, it has been defined the magnetic flux conservation. This is gonna be for the entire air. Um, do not uh, unselect the magnet now. When we load the properties of the magnets, they will override this section. But what is important here is <clears throat> we need to define the magnetic properties of the air. So we um, scroll down and go to relative permeability. And instead of saying from material, uh, because if you select from material, you will need to go here to materials and change the material properties. Uh, but you can go um, user define and define the mu sub bar here for the air. Well, the mu sub bar for the air is one, so right now it's, it is this, and it's gonna be isotropic. The console is gonna define by default the insulation layer. It's gonna be all the borders, the outside borders. <coughs> and uh, it's gonna define an initial values is the magnetic potential in zero. But another um, parameter that we need to define in order for console to run this easily, it's right click. And we are gonna define a point that is gonna be the, the zero magnetic scalar potential. So we select this one. And we're not going to select one of the corners, the outside corners of the, of, the, of the geometry that we define. So, select this one. If you have trouble selecting, you can go to this. This is a select box. And just make a box around the point that you want. And it's going to be selected. So this is going to be an initial condition of zero, um, of zero field uh, in this specific point. And that's, that's going to be useful for the simulation. And the other important one is right click on magnetic fields and hit magnetic flux conservation. Here, we're going to grab the properties of the magnet. So we select the magnet. We say, we say that this is a solid. <clears throat> and we are saying here that we are going to use, instead of the relative permeability, we are going to load the magnetization curve. <clears throat> and you can input values of magnetization. <clears throat> but I'm going to input the curve that we already uh, select here. So in order to do that, you're going to write the function that you're going to that we're gonna use. And we're gonna magnetize this in Y. It means that the, the magnet is gonna magnetize in this direction. So the function that we select is this one, mu sub zero M versus mu sub zero H. Okay, mu sub zero M versus mu sub zero H. But that's a function. You need to input something. So what is the input of this function? It's going to be the result of this module, MFNC. I'm going to hit here, MFNC. And it's going to be the value of the H field in Y. So MFNC dot H in Y. But if you take a look on this, this function is going to interpret only amperes per meter. And if you hit here, it's going to be <coughs> in yellow. So we need to convert this amperes per meter because H field is in amperes per meter and the M and resulting M is going to be in Tesla's. So we need to make some conversions here. So we are going to multiply this H field. We're going to multiply by the constant. And what is the constant? We are going to use mu sub zero. We're gonna use mu zero constant. That's one of the that's one of the constants that a console has by default. 
And the other thing, right now we are multiplying h, h, y by the constant, and we need to divide the result that is in Teslas. We're going to divide it by m, m, mu, sub, mu sub zero. So in this case, I was having a, a misspelling here, but um, if you verify the spelling, you're going to have the mfnc dot hs uh, hy multiplied by the mu constant. This is the function, the function that we create import here, and we divide that function by the mu constant. And this is only to have the units, the correct units. Input of y in amperes per meter, and the result here after multiplying by that uh, function is going to be in amperes per meter as well. <clears throat> okay, so once we hit this, we are ready to start working with the mesh. So there is no more uh, movement in the magnetic uh, domain. Right now, we are going to concentrate on how to mesh this. So for mesh, we are going to right click and select free triangular. And the first thing that we are going to select. <clears throat> it's domain, and we are going to select the magnet. <clears throat> and I'm going to make right click size, and you can start playing here with which, uh, which dimensions do you want. I generally use uh, the fluid dynamics and uh, something fine. So you build the selection, and you're going to have some parameters. If you want, if you want to make this finer, you just go here to look like extra fine <clears throat> that's gonna be enough and now we are gonna um, mesh everything else so we repeat the steps free triangular go to mesh and set um sorry here free, uh, free triangular and head size for free triangular we are gonna hit the remaining and from size we are gonna say like general physics and go to extremely fine. Uh, generally speaking, fluid dynamics is thinner. I mean, the, the mesh is uh, smaller than the general physics. <coughs> the mesh, and now we have a very nice uh, mesh around. Okay, and we are ready to see the, the study. The study is stationary and is gonna solve only one physics. So we can right click, and hit compute. As soon as it finished, you're gonna have this simulation. But this simulation, this result is not giving us a lot of information. So, so we need to uh, post-processing this a little bit. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna define the data sets. What is this? I'm gonna say like, I want two different simulations. I want uh, one simulation with everything and one simulation with only uh, what is inside the infinite layer. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna go to data set, sorry, so the, in the inside data set, study one, solution one, I'm gonna right click here and I'm gonna define the selection. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go to domain, and I'm gonna select what I want to simulate. So in this way, I'm only going to simulate what is inside this box. I don't care what is outside because it's an infinite layer and I, I really don't need that information. <clears throat> so when you change this, immediately the result change and you are no longer going to see the, the infinite layer. So you don't, you don't use for your calculations. Next, <clears throat> next, we want to include some uh, right now we are simulating the B field only and the norm of the B field. So you go here, surface, and you are going to see that the simulation is for the norm of B and is in Teslas. So I can change this to milli Teslas, for example, <clears throat> and it's going to change only this, the bar here. And you can change the colors and play with this. <clears throat> but what is important is um, Sometimes we don't know what is this, what is this label here, if it's in meters or not. So you, you can just write here. Um, and and we, we know in advance that this is going to be millimeters. And this is going to be millimeters. So this is the way to. <coughs> okay. 
And the other important thing is we want the flux lines. So we right click in magnetic flux density and we say add to this plot another one that is going to be a streamline. So this streamline is going to be the B sub X and the B sub Y from the data set that we already uh, defined. And I'm going to define as uniform, uniform density. And from uniform density, I'm going to, instead of automatic, I'm going to manual and I'm going to last the, I'm going to uh, change the last value, terminating distance factor. This is a distance from the magnet. So sometimes if the streamline ends here, there is a big gap between the magnet and the streamline. I don't want that gap. So I'm just reducing this to zero. <clears throat> and I want a black line and I can hit plot. But right now you have all the streamlines that they supposed to be. And as I mentioned before, if you don't have the infinite layer, what you're going to see is that your streamline is going to flatten here. Right now, you can see that the streamlines continues into the infinite layer. And that's what exactly what we want. We, we don't want interruptions in the field lines. That's why we add this infinite layer.